Hello everyone and welcome to my vlog where I tabled as an artist at comic -Ed. I'll be going through the process of prepping merch all the way to the convention itself and at the end, I'll be breaking down my experience and discussing if this con is worth tabling at in the future. Recording here too. One, two, three. We got a package today. Let's open it up. It's in here. These are all my stickers that I ordered. Ooh. Oh, look at them. They're so cute. And then we have some fried chicken stickers and other stickers. Let's open one package up. New collector stickers. Oh, wow. The colors are so vibrant here. Wow, look at that. Okay, what else do we have? Hunter. Hunter's looking cute. That's pretty cute. Wow, look at all these collectors. And then we also have some Capra stickers. Wow, they came out really good. Ooh, we got some Celestial Buddies. The cut is really nice and clean. Okay, I guess the next thing that I have to do is pack all of these up. While this b-roll is playing, I thought I could talk about my experience in prepping for this convention. This was technically my third time tabling at a convention as a quote-unquote independent artist. There was this one time back in college where our organization got one full table at comic for any members who wanted to contribute their art to be sold. But yeah, this is my first time I'm tabling at comic on my own. This convention was also the most expensive convention I've ever invested in, mainly because of the manufacturing that went into my products. The manufacturer I'm currently using charges a lot per page, but the quality of their products is just so good. But uh, yeah, hopefully in the future I can find a cheaper manufacturer that produces good quality products still. So I just realized that all of the Amity stickers have these odd little bumps near her pants and uh, this boot. So I have to go back and cut up all of these and to make them look like this, more of a clean cut sticker. A lot of the stickers seem like they have these extra little bumps here, also there. Probably because there, there's like an extra pixel that I missed and then it just, it was caught in the outline when, they, when the printer was outlining the stickers. So I have to cut off all of those bumps. One thing I saw other artists do online with their old merch was put them in mystery bags at a discounted price, so that's what I did. I shuffled all my old prints and placed two prints and one sticker in each bag. Something I did to save money was do some DIY crafting where I reused old boxes and repurposed them to hold my stickers. This box from Zack and Keith's Hot Box was perfect for holding 12 sticker designs.
day on to day one of Comic Cat. I arrived at the venue at around 8 a.m. and my table mates were already there. Comic Cat allowed exhibitors to enter as early as 3 a.m., which was insane but honestly nice since some people have complex displays. I don't have uh, much footage of me setting up because I was just really occupied. So here was before everything was set up, and this is after. At my last convention, my table mates had the smart idea to stick everything on their display grids beforehand. So that's what I did, and it did make a difference. It did make things easier. Our table at Comic Cat was 6 feet by 2 feet big, and I tabled with Rally, aka Rally Rush, while my other group mates, Raf or Hampas Lumpia, and G or Vitamin G, tabled beside us. We were also limited by how tall our display could be. It could not be more than 6 feet from the floor, I think. I think it was from the floor or from the table surface. I think it was from the floor. This was also the tallest my display has ever been. Most of the displays from other artists at the convention were around 3 grids tall or 3 feet tall. So I matched that so people could get a good view of my space. Okay, booth tour! I'm really happy with my setup, especially how much my display has changed over the years. This was my first con in 2019, and it's so simple, I even wrote down the price list on sticky notes instead of printing them. Uh, so yeah, that was 2019, and this is now, in 2023. So first we have my mystery bags filled with my old art and my sticker packs. Then we have my stickers like the Owl House ones, Mythological Cuties, Good Omens, Pride Chicken, and the puns. And some more stickers like Steven Universe and more Pride Chicken. We also have my Lover's Print and Owl House Prints. I labeled everything with some labeling paper I got from National Bookstore so that it would be easier for customers to tell me which prints they wanted. And also here we have my artist name and more Owl House merch. And last but not least, my Pesos for Pups tip jar. I didn't get a close-up video of it, but I also put a printout of my uh, Gcash QR code on a little easel. Hello. So yeah, it's day one of Comic Cat and surprisingly, a lot of the good omens, well, maybe not surprisingly, a lot of the good omens sticker packs have been doing really well. Like it's only 12 o'clock and I've sold like like seven good omen sticker packs. And also the, uh, the lover's print has been doing really well. So I think that's exciting. I'm really happy the lover's is doing really well.
It is 6 p.m. Uh, for day two at Comic Cat, and it's been a busy day. Um, all of the Good Omen stickers uh, are sold out, which is really cool. Also, the lover's print and the Polaroid version of this print is also sold out. So that's pretty cool. Um, also, the Owl House sticker packs are selling out uh, really quickly. I only have uh, two left uh, in this kind of packaging, and then I'll have to use uh, my brown envelopes to uh, package them up myself. So that was Comic Cat. Now that it's over, I wanted to give my thoughts on my experience, what went well, and what I could improve on. Prior to the convention, I recommend to promote as much as you can on social media a month in advance. Um, yeah, a month in advance is good. And then slowly announce your products in the weeks leading up to the event. Some artists also make catalogs of their products so viewers know what to look forward to. This is a little schedule that I made um, for the things that I wanted to promote leading up to Comic Cat. So you can pause this video, take a screenshot of it, um, and maybe save it for later for inspiration. And yes, I also listed down each of the dates for the premieres of the R Flag Means Death uh, Season 2 episodes because it's important to me. So that's why I wrote it down. If there's an episode on that day, I will not post anything. All my focus was to be on the episodes of the day. Um, for during the convention, label everything. People will still ask how much an item is even though the price is right next to it, so... Be patient, uh, I honestly still do this too, but I still suggest to label everything. I had a maximum of three labels per item that I strategically placed throughout my display, but still people tended to ask like how much something was, which, you know, you just have to be patient about. Also, pack basic stationary equipment like scissors, tape, a pen, a marker, and some sticky notes. They are all very helpful for quick changes, like my last one labels or my discount labels. Those really helped in getting people's attention. I also label my merch from the back as well. I numbered all my prints so I didn't have to lean over too much to check every time. And I wrote down the numbers corresponding to each print at the back of my display. It also helps to tell customers about any promo you're having because even if it's displayed, there's a tendency to miss it. I sold my stickers for 25 pesos each or 3 for 70 pesos and when customers would hand me two stickers, I would suggest they add one more because of the promo and a lot of times they would add one more and, and most of the time I didn't even have to mention the promo and people would just automatically grab three stickers because they saw it on my labels. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I also want to talk about what sold well and what didn't. My Good Omen stickers and surprisingly, my Studio Heartbreak, The Lover's print, all sold out. I definitely have to make some more for my next con. The Owl House stickers and sticker packs also did well. I also sold out of the Hex Squad Polaroid prints by the end of the con. The Pride Chicken stickers and Mythological stickers also did pretty decent. Um, unfortunately, the pun stickers and mystery bags didn't do so well. I've seen vlogs of artists selling a lot of their mystery bags, so I thought that it could work for me. But I guess this goes to show that because it worked for someone else, doesn't mean it could work for you. I guess what I could have done differently was label the mystery bags better since my packaging was very simple and I only had one label for them all, the price label. The puns not selling as much surprised me a lot because they were a bestseller at StickerCon back in April. So yeah, I guess um, it's a different crowd at comic Ed. Or maybe I just didn't promote it as best as I could? I don't know. My Hunt Low prints didn't do so well either, which was surprising because uh, they did very well back in April of this year. I guess the timing factored into it as well. Back in April, the show just ended, the Owl House just ended, so it was still fresh in everyone's minds. And now that it's October, the hype kind of died down a bit. 
But not all the way, I noticed, since people really like the Owl House Polaroids and sticker packs. Okay, on to some pros and cons. Cons first. This first con didn't affect me as much, but I didn't have a helper with me, so I had to leave my items with my table mates if I wanted to go around um, or get something to eat or go to the restroom. I say this didn't bother me as much because Rally was very helpful in covering for me and also I liked staying around my booth because of the interactions I had with people. I was able to go around and buy a small amount of merch but I couldn't really stay at any one place to have long conversations with other artists because I kept thinking of having to go back to my table. Another thing was the venue was really big so a lot of artists tabled which was nice. Um, however, the crowds were also big. There was a large flow of people around 1 to 3 p.m., especially during the second day. There were so many people that they were touching shoulders and uh, it tended to get really warm in some areas of the con. So yeah, a pro of the convention was there were so many artists tabling. So there were a lot of opportunities to find different kinds of art and meet lots of customers. However, I think this also sort of acted as a con for me. Since the venue was so big, I think customers were overwhelmed with how much was going on. Uh, so it affected my sales, I think. But I think that's just the overthinker part of me talking. A lot of factors go into sales, like what kind of products you have, the marketing you did, and how you present your items. Um, the lighting in our area was nice, that was a pro. All the merch was well lit. However, one part of the con was dark, so... It was hard to see some of the booths in at a certain area of the con, which is unfortunate for some exhibitors. I hope they were okay. Now, is tabling at Comic Cat worth it? I would say it depends. I know no one really wants to hear that answer, but it really does depend on so many factors, not just you. So many things can um, affect your experience at Comic Cat as an exhibitor. Whether that be like how, like what I mentioned, like how you market yourself, what kind of products you make, and if you're making fan art, like is it a relevant fandom? Is there an audience for that fandom? Or if you're making original art, is there an audience for your original art? So I've seen a lot of people and I've heard some stories that some people earn like five figures at Comic Cat. Yeah, five figures. But I've also heard that people just stay at four figures and can't break through five figures. So yeah, it really depends on like so many things. For me, I don't do conventions all the time and it's not my main source of income. For this convention, uh, I didn't earn as much as I expected. Um, my gross profit was, was nice, but my net profit, it was just fine. It wasn't spectacular. It was just okay i think for me um it's either i have to change my game plan for my future conventions so that i could earn a bit more or uh i should just make conventions something that i do only once a year i know a lot of people who who live near conventions can afford to go to so many conventions throughout the year but for me it's it, it's just something that I think I can only do once or twice a year. But after all of that, why even do it in the first place? Why do I table at conventions at all when I could make far more money doing something else? Personally, it's far easier for me to make money from commissions versus conventions. Not everyone is a big name artist with a large fan base or like not everyone makes fan art of Genshin Impact <laughs> or any of those big fandoms. Uh, who will buy their merch no matter the price. But for me, and sorry if it sounds corny, but for me, it's the community that matters the most. I got to meet artists I admire in person, and I got to catch up with friends, meet people who like the same things I'm into, and I got to ha have a break from my usual day-to-day -day life. I'm fortunate enough that I have other sources of income and cons aren't my main source, but... Yeah, I don't earn much through them. Uh, I'd say for first-time art convention sellers, uh, start small and don't get discouraged if you don't make much money or much profit when you first start out because it takes time to build an audience and for people to know who you are. 
And if you don't sell out all of your merch, that's okay too, because there's always after the con where you can sell your remaining merch online. But, you know, just because I had this experience doesn't mean that you or other artists have the same experience as me. Like I mentioned before, people can earn a lot at conventions. They can earn five figures, some people can't break even, and others just earn a good amount and have a good time. And that's what I did. As for my next con, I'll be tabling at StickerCon Manila on November 19 at White Space Manila, Makati, and that will be my last con of this year. Uh, so make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter to be notified when my next events will happen. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching. Um, and until next time, bye!